Welcome to another episode of Blubber Reports! Today, few watchers of my channel, we will discuss the latest developments in the Phenomenon book series project. Oh no. Yeah, that, that's a kill. The Phenomenon book series project. The upcoming trailer and the future of this channel once again. Lately, especially seeing what I can do to reach people with my channel has been on my mind. And I intend to experiment with as many things as possible in the coming few months. Of course, your input is greatly appreciated. Be sure to leave a comment down below and I will read it and take it to heart your ideas. Now, with that out of the way, now with that out of the way, now with that out of the way, let us talk about the phenomenon. But first, roll introduction sequence. Action. Blubber blubber <gasps> report! Today is the end of February. I have pushed along phenomenon as far as I could. After the release of the trailer, I've had minor success in reaching people around. I haven't gotten many people to read the Academy Days uh, prequel series yet, but I feel like I am getting there and I will slowly push onward. And eventually, I believe. Success might just arise, as long as I try enough. Now, for Phenomenon, currently, we have the trailer, the book, which is currently being edited by some people, and proofreaded. Proofreader, proofreader's uh, a bit longer than I anticipated, so I am adding more time for that. And you can expect Phenomenon, the book, to release on Amazon very soon. Academy Days, the free prequel series, has been going for about a month now on uh, especially Wattpad and Scribblehub, which are sites that usually feature very cliched romances. Maybe not the best sites, which is why I have lately tried other platforms as well, such as Royal Road and Creative Novel. I'll see what comes out of that. And I will inform you of that progress in our Discord server. <laughs> Promotion moment! Enter our Discord server. It's free. I think that an audiobook version of my book would be very cool. I have been working on another novel, a fantasy novel, The Clamor Chronicles, but that will be part of a future episode. It is now phenomenon time! <laughs> Today, I will tell you about phenomenon. And very shortly, I will upload me reading the first chapter of Academy Days as a story time episode. For now, this series, what is this phenomenon I have been talking all the time actually about? If you haven't gone into checking it, be sure to visit the links below. Phenomenon Academy Days is a short story styled episodal tale of the main characters of Phenomenon Recognition five years before. They are 14 years old and are growing up in a TSFF military academy. Now, this all takes place uh, in a science fiction fantasy world. It's just not hard sci-fi enough to call it true science fiction. But it is pretty sciency. but there are also some hidden, more fantasy-like elements. And those are part of well, more fantasy, which is why I don't consider my world soft sci-fi, which is defined by science fiction, like things like robots, spaceships, but with systems that are magical. No, not magical. By systems that are defined by something that does not necessarily have to be hard technology. Hard sci-fi is uh, in a world 
where the creator can explain in true science how things work. In soft sci-fi, that is not the case. My story is an in-between. Now, the story itself... The <laughs> voice! Um, the story itself is part of what I see as a drama. A slice of life. Uh, my readers have called it light novel-esque. Like an anime, but with better, a different perspective on writing. This is exactly the perspective I want to take. I want to create a wonderful world that's accessible for a lot of different people with a lot of different things they like. Phenomenon Academy Days works in my mind as, not per se, a comedy. It's not phrased like a comedy, it's just that there's character chemistry which leads to comedy. But it's mostly a drama, I think. Every three chapters create an episode which creates a small moral life lesson for you to think about and have sleepless nights over. The characters in Academy Days are Vincent Harrower, a young 14 year old old boy who has a very edgy backstory because his parents died in a horrible accident. He used to be very idealistic. He wanted to be a hero. He always trained to be the best of the best, like the protagonist of, um, of a shonen anime. But that kind of fell apart when he blamed the death of his parents on his ignorance and his willfulness, his purely idealistic perspective on life around him. So he got a bit more cynical. He became a crusader of truth and his personality turned into something I can best describe as inquisitive. He likes observing, especially people around him, learning things about the world around him. He keeps his distance from many events and uses his inquisitive mind to see the truth about things. Luckily, this boy, Vincent, is not alone. He has other characters to help him. For example, we have Nick Dodger. His friend, Nick, uh, is socially awkward. He doesn't understand emotions well. Now, there are a lot of labels you can put on such behavior, but with writing Nick, I wanted to create a unique character, a unique perspective on which you can't plop down labels about what kind of um, condition he has. Nick focuses on everything. He wants to learn, he wants to understand things. And Vincent is the perfect partner for that since they're both an inquisitive mind. They're both set on learning things. They both are a bit the social outcasts of their class and their environment since they distance themselves from others. Okay. A class? Yes. The TSFF is a huge organization, a company, a mega company, a mega corporation. They own everything. They're, they're great. They could easily brainwash the people and turn my entire happy story into a dystopia. But in my story, they don't. The TSFF are both a government hailing from the holy world of Puntia, which is their home world. Which means that my characters are not actually humans, they're putians, hey, detail. And besides being a government, they're also a military entity. They also colonize other worlds, spread their influence. They, instead of countries, the entirety of Puntia has formed into a single government, which is also a corporation. A TSFF has a very has a very um, action-packed and militaristic culture. This is because in my world simulators exist. Think of them as virtual reality computers, but everyone owns them and they're super realistic and great. Now in such a world it's very easy for everyone in your world to become addicted to these simulators and spend day in, day out, sitting in a simulator, living their fantasy life. But because of the TSFF's efforts to bring about the best in their populace, generally this is not the case. With genetic engineering, people of the TSFF, the Puntians, have become very resilient. 
cell death aging has been countered, and a person of Puntia can get as old as, as possible, thousand years old maybe, though most don't live that long, because the, the TSFF culture teaches that you must live a life of fulfillment, and that it's better to have an action-packed life than sit back for eternity. And that is a theme in my book series. The speed of growing up, of meeting people, of trying to find your purpose in life and your ideals. I think it's a very personal aspect for me as well. Everyone kind of wants to see who they can become, what can happen to them. They have dreams and ideals and expectations about what they can achieve in the life around them, but that does not always resolve the way they expect it to. If this strings you, if this struck, strikes chord at you in any way, seek out a physician and get help. <laughs> These are, for now, all the thoughts I have about the Phenomenon series. But there is something I did not tell you in the introduction of this episode. <laughs> you remember now? Yes. There is something else. I have lately posted a new story. It is called... Everglow. It takes place in the world of Phenomenon and the TSFF. But it's about something else entirely. Scrapper Calyx finds itself on board the haunted legendary spaceship, the TSFF Everglow. A spaceship set to be lost in space and time. This spaceship had saved Puntia in a massive war against the Verenaction War Coalition eons ago. And it was said to be lost in space and time, his wreckage never found. Now Caitlyx is part of an ordinary scrapper crew. They live by scrapping the remains of starships from battles. A bit of a low life, bordering on criminality type of life, but he was forced into it, though he has a kind heart. Calyx is a very emotion-driven person, very much different from Vincent's perspective, for example. And when he finds himself alone, stuck on a forbidding world, on an ancient starship, haunted by ghosts. I farted. Things do not go as expected. It's free. Read it right now. Listen, listen to this song I made myself about Everglow. Who the f watches this? Thank you. 
state of North Iraq will require assessment. A hard pillar of the unknown team must be dispatched. Man!